Hello everyone, my name is Cindy Mealy. I am the director for the Butler County WIC program with Primary Health Solutions. And today we are celebrating National Nutrition Month by uh, doing this video to show everyone how to make healthy choices, uh, to improve your nutrition, improve your diet. And I have some helpers today. I have Renee Just, she is a dietitian with Primary Health Solutions, and I have Julie Clausing. She is a dietitian with the Butler County WIC program. So we are going to do some shopping. So if you saw me holding this plate, this is called the My Plate, and what it does is it is a great guide with showing how you should eat healthy. And the plate is divided into the plate itself is four sections, but you'll see there's a fifth section here. So this is what you want your plate to look like in eating a healthy diet. You'd like to see that you have a quarter of the plate is for protein foods, a quarter for grains, and then half of the plate should be fruits and vegetables. And then there's another spot for dairy products because it's really important to have some, some good calcium in the diet and vitamin D. So we are gonna show you how to shop so that you can fill this plate the way it needs to be done. The first section we're going to start with here is our dairy. Uh, dairy is an excellent source of calcium and vitamin D, um, which is really important for growing kids because their bones are growing so quickly and we just want to make sure um, that they're getting a strong base. So a really easy way to do that is with milk. Um, when you go to the store, you might see all kinds of different colors of milk um, tops and that's just to display the fat content. All of the milks here in the U.S. are fortified with vitamin D, so even though the red milk or whole milk may say vitamin D, they all contain the same amount. And we are just focusing on the fat content rather than the content of calcium and vitamin D. Yogurt and cheese are also another great option to get the calcium needed for strong bones. And if a, a cup of milk tends to give you a sensitive stomach or you just can't really tolerate it, Soy milk can be another great option. Um, and the reason that we re typically recommend soy milk over almond milk is because it's also a good source of protein as well. So some of the things that you want to look for when you um, have different disease processes like diabetes, um, most of our milks also contain some natural sugar in them. So along with the fat content that we want to watch out for, we also want to make sure we're not drinking too much milk during the day because that does contribute to a lot of carbohydrates. So another great thing about um, this yogurt in particular, the Dan and Oikos Triple Zero, is that it doesn't have any added sugars and it's low fat and um, it also tastes pretty good. So mm -hmm. this one I recommend because it has a good balance of protein to carbohydrates and it can be used as a really good snack. Cheese also is a great source of protein something that you can combine with um, an apple or some crackers to make a great snack in between your meals. And the next section we'll be moving on to our fruits and vegetables. Okay. So as you see on my plate, half of it is fruits and vegetables. And that's because that's where we get a lot of our nutrients because there's all kinds of different colors. Each color has a different nutrient to offer. And along with that, with fruits and vegetables, they can be fresh, frozen, or canned and be just as nutritious. When looking for frozen fruits and vegetables, you want to make sure that they don't have any extra added sugars, extra sodium, or sauces mixed in. And the same goes for canned fruits and vegetables. A lot of times with vegetables, you can get no salt added or low sodium options. And then when looking at fruits, Try to look for them packed in 100% fruit juice or maybe even water if possible and try to avoid heavy syrup when you can. Another easy option to get in a quick source of um, fruits is just a small glass of 100% fruit juice. But you do want to make sure it's 100% so there's no additional sugar in there. So something to be mindful of um, when you're selecting your fruits and vegetables um, is to make sure you get a good variety each day. So um, I know a lot of people, especially if they have diabetes or um, even who are trying to manage their weight, um, try to shy away from fruit. But really it's an important part of your, your meals and we just want to watch the portion sizes. So we want to eat smaller amounts, but make sure we have a good variety of fruit. Um, fruit juice 
is okay. Really, we need very small amounts, about four ounce glasses of juice. Um, so it's not as recommended. It's better to eat your vegetable, or I'm sorry, the actual fruit, instead of drinking the juice because you get more fiber from the actual fruit. Um, it is okay, though. We just want to watch that we're not, again, drinking too much of the juice. Um, again, fresh, frozen, and canned are great. And um, always keep in mind what Julie said about the canned fruits having, um, you know, watch out for the syrups, the light and the heavy syrups that they can be canned in. Especially with vegetables, it's something we don't get enough of in our diets. So we want to be creative with how we incorporate those into our meals. Um, a lot of times we don't get those in breakfast as often. So um, maybe a good focus is during lunch or dinner, adding some of the vegetables in um, at those two meals during the day. Um, another thing about canned vegetables with the sodium content, if you have high blood pressure, um, looking for no salt added in your canned vegetables, or if you already have some in the pantry, just make sure to rinse them off really well first before throwing them in the pan to cook them because that helps to get a lot of the sodium off as well. So something that Julie said is to eat a variety of colors. We, we talk about eat a rainbow, and that way if you think of the rainbow, you think of different colors, you'll get a lot of different nutrients from different fruits and vegetables. So the next section of our plate that we'll explore is the protein section. Now a lot of people would just think of protein being common meats like chicken, beef, or pork, but there are actually a lot of alternative options that you can do that are actually a lot more affordable. Some of those being canned fish like tuna and salmon, dried beans and lentils, canned beans, which don't take quite as long to cook but are still just as nutritious, peanut butter, and eggs. Um, each of these options are lean protein sources, meaning that they don't have um, quite as much fat as pork or beef may, um, but still to try to keep them only to a quarter size on your plate. Something that's nice with um, a lot of the um, beans or uh, plant-based protein sources is that um, when we focus on doing a vegetarian meal once a week, it really cuts down on the amount of fat that we take into our diets. Um, especially when we cut out one of the um, animal protein options. So um, as you're planning your meals throughout the week, trying to get a meal that's a vegetarian protein source, uh, like a vegetarian chili um, that you can make in a big pot, or even a vegetable soup can be um, a nice meal to eat on for a few days. Uh, we want to make sure we eat a good variety of protein. We usually in the U.S. don't need to focus too much on protein because we usually get enough throughout our day. But we want to make sure that we're eating it regularly throughout the day and eating our meals nicely spaced so that we can feel nice and satisfied. And protein helps with that as well. So finishing up our plate is the grain section. And as you can see, it's only a quarter of the plate. Um, and whole grains is a lot more than just bread. It can be the bread, tortillas, rice, pasta, oatmeal, cereal, a lot of different things can fall in this category. The most important thing though is to remember to try and keep your grains, um, getting about half of them to be whole grain. And what that means when they're making, let's say bread, they're using the whole piece of the wheat kernel and not stripping anything away. Um, a lot of times when you look at a label, it will say 100% whole wheat, or if you look at the ingredients, that first ingredient will be listed as whole wheat flour. Whereas if you pick up a different piece um, or loaf of bread, the first ingredient will be enriched flour, which means they've stripped away a lot of those nutrients, including fiber, and they try to add them back in, but it's just not quite the same. Um, same goes for pasta. They make whole wheat pasta the same way, keeping that whole piece of the grain and then brown rice, same thing again. That whole kernel is there. So we, the good thing about whole grain foods um, with the fiber content is that it helps keep you full for longer throughout the day. So if you're trying to manage your weight or lose weight, it can help you from getting hungry in between meals. Um, it also um, is a good choice if you have diabetes because when you fill just a quarter of your plate with your whole grains, uh, your blood sugar won't increase as quickly as if you would choose a refined grain or 
like a piece of white bread or white rice. So it's a better option just for managing blood sugars a little bit easier. And um, try different brands of, let's say the, the wheat bread, um, everyone's tastes are a little bit different. And so the different brands of bread make them differently. I'm sure you'll find something out there that you do like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, I'm Italian and we do, we cook a lot of <laughs> pasta. So trying to convince my family to try this whole grain pasta, which we did, and it, it's, it was delicious. I mean, by the time you either put your tomato sauce on or if you want to saute a lot of vegetables and olive oil, garlic, it's really wonderful. It has more texture, I would think, if the only, but really, really delicious. It's like it's al dente, so very good. Mm -hmm. And along with these whole grains, cereals can also be a good option to get in some of those needed carbohydrates that we need for energy. Um, but to keep in mind, to try to keep the sugar content low and the fiber high, because the, the cereal aisle can be quite overwhelming when trying to navigate healthy options. And always the take home message is small portions. This all fits, everything fits on your plate, all the different types of foods. We just want to make sure that we're not overdoing it or overindulging, especially in our carbohydrates. So we'd like to end this by asking you to take the My Plate Challenge. So think about what you can do um, at home. Grab a plate, think about how you can divide it into the four sections. And as you're shopping, you know, keep in mind every the suggestions that we made. If you are on the WIC program, everything we showed you today is a WIC authorized food. You can buy it with your WIC nutrition card. If you're not on the WIC program, definitely we hope you follow these guidelines. And these foods are affordable. Um, you can do it on a, on a limited budget. And we promise that if you try to make some of those changes, eat the Mike Plate way, you'll find yourself feeling so much better. You may reach some of your weight loss goals or your health goals lower your blood pressure, lower your weight, control your diabetes, and just, you know, children growing and developing healthy. It's just a wonderful way to eat.